Saturday, everybody. Uh, my name is Sean Haynes, and this is Dakota Walker. Yay! Hooray! And we are two uh, executive board members of Busted Space Theater Company, and we are also the co-directors of the show that you're going to see this evening. Um, and so this year, uh, what we do every year at Busted Space is we do an event called Let's Talk. About. So what happens with Let's Talk About is we get a submission up for a certain topic, and then um, students or like faculty or like people of the community in general write in submissions or opinions on this topic and then we take those and develop them into a show and then um, cast the show and then we perform it somewhere and so this year's uh, topic is politics yay so um, that's why it's interesting as that is and so yes uh, the cast has done a brilliant job with it and you're going to see some really great work tonight and uh, also, thank you to the Cup for hosting this event here. Yeah, yeah work. And all of these are um, submissions from yeah, all of these are submissions uh, from students around campus or the Ball State general area. Um, different political views and opinions and things they have to say, and we gave those people a voice tonight. So, without any further ado. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about politics. <laughs> Vote your conscience. We're forced to explain a country that doesn't make much sense. I believe we are stronger together. White silence is violence. Hillary Clinton couldn't even hold on to her husband. How is she supposed to hold on to this country? When Trump talks in the debates, I just fast forward right through it because he can talk all day, but you don't really learn anything. What kind of America do we want to be? Dangerously divided or strongly united? I am terrified. I am one person. With one vote. I will be casting that vote and I will be the person I think can lead our country in a good direction. I can campaign for them, I can talk to people about their policies, I can sling mud at other candidates. I can illustrate every single horrible, awful thing Donald Trump has said and said he will do. But at the end of the day, I'm one person with one vote. I don't know what's going to happen in the next few months. I am scared that the specter of hate that has festered within so many people in this country has been essentially sanctioned by members of the Republican Party and will be allowed to grow unchecked. I am scared for my father and my brothers because of the color of our skin will be characterized and labeled as illegals. I am scared for my family, some of whom have bought into this charade or are intending to aid this terrible human being. I'm scared for my friends, but because they are members of the LGBT plus community, people of color or women are threatened by the abolition of the victories of the, that they have fought so hard to achieve. I'm scared for this country. I'm scared for myself, because I am one person with one vote. That is all I have to fight for. It's corrupt, and in order to have an opinion, you either have to be very, very rich or very, very powerful. I don't understand politics. Well, that's not quite right. I understand the how of politics. I understand how our officials are elected, how our judiciary system works. I understand our checks and balances, our elections, our constitution and its founding. And anything I don't understand, I go out of my way to look up and educate myself on. I guess what I don't understand is the why of politics. I don't understand why we continue to use a two-party system that has rotted and evolved <laughs> into a nasty vicious us versus them. mentality where neither side is willing to compromise, leaving us with stalemates and no progress. I don't understand why money so often is deemed more important than human lives. 
I don't understand why my body, my sexuality, and my choices are a political hunting ground and topic of hot debate. But most of all, I don't understand hate. I mean, from a psychological perspective, all human beings are hardwired to lump all things into groups or categories in order to understand them. Psychologists call these schemas. Discrimination and hate stems when you lump someone into a group naturally, and then factors in your own environment, such as your parents, culture, media, etc., convince you that the person in that group is other, and stereotypes <laughs> them, which lead to prejudice and discrimination and hate. I guess what I don't understand is that we as humans know this about ourselves. We have scientists who study it. Yet we passively accept this as just, just human nature. It's, it's not in human nature to hate. I don't buy that at all. We are miraculous creatures, blessed with minds to reason and hearts to love. <laughs> we are better than our natural instincts. We are capable of so much more than hate. And yet, we have a person running for president of the United States whose entire campaign is fueled by hate. It's 2016, and we're still letting fear and hate rule us. Millions of years of human evolution have led to this, and I for one am not angry. I'm merely disappointed. If there's one thing this election year has taught me so far, it is that empathy is a skill that must be taught. Humans are mammals that need other people for support, and we have created and adapted many ways to connect more than ever before. We are born with the innate ability to empathize with each other, just like we're born with the capacity to read and write. But if that ability is never fostered, never worked out or taught, it will never manifest. We teach people to read and write because it's important in the culture we've cultivated, but why do we not teach people empathy? Why do we not teach people the importance of connecting with each other? And why do we not teach each other how to do that? Why do we not teach kindergartners that different is okay? That different should be celebrated. That each of us is a unique individual belonging to an infinite series of groups of cultures and that one is not better than the other. Why do we not teach to see with our eyes and our hearts at the same time? I truly believe that if we took the time to stop trying to be understood and start listening, our political and societal climate would change completely. The old saying that we don't know someone until we walk in their shoes, it, it rings truer today now than it ever has before. We've got to stop seeing each other as the enemy and start, start seeing each other as enemy. human beings. We're all part of the same tribe, and the tribe cannot survive with infight. The tribe can only survive with empathy and understanding. They don't understand why our politicians don't understand them. I wish they would, because I'm scared. I began to wonder why people got into politics in the first place. If they weren't good people, looking out for the community, standing up for myself and others like me, keeping my best interests at heart, then what was the motivation? That's when I learned exactly how much Congress members make each year they're in power. So I've learned that most politicians aren't in it for the whole moral values or speaking out for the community thing. Most just like the amount of money they receive which is upsetting. But this isn't the main idea, more of a lead up to my most recent revolution on politics. Desperate communities will cling to the most ridiculous <coughs> of candidates. Example, Donald Trump, a man who wants to defund Planned Parenthood, makes fun of disabled people, insults the black community, degrades women, promotes Islamophobia, and believes in the full-fledged use of nuclear weapons. He was quoted as saying he would look at a child of Syria and say, Get out. You can't come here. I mean, this man's economic plan would ruin the economy of America more quickly than Reaganomics. 
I'm sure at one point Donald Trump had morals and values and a human heart that could actually feel something. I'm sure he had good ideas and interesting points of view, but what's going on? I'm afraid for the safety of all people at just the thought of Trump and Pence in the White House. In my child idea of Congress, we wouldn't have to be afraid. Maybe we don't like the idea of Clinton in the White House, but I'd much rather have her than Mr. Bankrupt four times and Governor Condoms are too liberal. I'm totally stuck in a country where both of our presidential candidates are D-U-M-B dumb. <laughs> has many fingers and hands that pry at who I am. A woman, a gay woman. Politics has much to say about my body, my vagina, my marriage. I feel like I'm caught up in the windstorm with politics and its effects that happen to me, and I am helpless against it. I turn on the TV and they're discussing the laws that will change my life. Banker men and women all debating something that won't really affect them in the long run, while I, again, am helpless. Mm -hmm. Countless articles, advertisements, and comments for and against me assault me every day. The digital age is overwhelming. Constant pings and notifications all day, every day. I think in this age it would just be easier just not to be me. It would be easier to be straight. Then at least I can marry and start a family with no major issue. Or be a man and give my poor uterus a break from hearing harsh words credited up as concern. But I can't. So I protest politics. I sign petitions. I march. I cry over Bernie Sanders. But mostly, I mourn the time I have to spend yelling because of rights I should already have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, OK. Yuck it up. Yeah, I probably look ridiculous, but you know what? You know what? I'm protected from the government and the harmful radio waves that they are sending. Yeah, and I mean, okay, I can't stand directly in front of the microwave when it's going, I get a little bit of a headache, but you know what else this protects me from? Aliens. <laughs> They're up there. They're up there, and they can't penetrate through aluminum foil, crazy as it seems. There's some crazy science behind it that I'd be happy to talk to you about afterwards if you feel so inclined. But while the rest of you remain sheep to the government and our inevitable alien overlords, I will be safe in my bunker with my hat. <laughs> <laughs> Today's politics reminds me of a story I once read in Greco-Roman mythology. The story involves a competition between the goddess Athena and a human named Arachne. Now, there are three versions of the story, however, each version tells of how Arachne was a renowned weaver who constantly boasted of her talents, and how she was a better weaver than Athena. Well, obviously, as the goddess of wisdom and crafts, Athena became very angry at the thought of a mere mortal claiming to have better talents than herself. So, Athena comes down to Earth, disguised as an old woman, and asks Arachne if she truly believes that she has better skills than Athena. When Arachne <coughs> continues to boast of her skills, Athena removes her cloak, shows who she truly is, and challenges Arachne to a weaving competition. Arachne accepts and weaves a depiction of the gods amusing humans, especially Zeus, who is known for seducing humans such as Europa. This upsets Athena even more, who depicted, who weaved a depiction of the people of Greece. Arachne's depiction was obviously much more beautiful, but the judge Poseidon found her depiction of the gods insulting. As punishment, Athena turned Arachne into a spider, where she and her descendants were doomed to weave for all eternity. Now, I found a direct connection between this story and today's politics, because today's politicians seem to think that they are like the gods and should be worshipped as such. When someone questions or challenges one of the politicians, they are immediately looked down upon and seen as an annoyance by those politicians. In previous years, 
Candidates used to look forward to hearing the questions and concerns of the public so that they could make them feel at ease for voting for them by telling them what they would do to improve this country. Picture, if you will, like a regular 747, that type of airplane. Um, paint it black, jet black. <laughs> Our political system has caused 
a divisive mentality. I believe that in order to change the current political climate, our great country needs to take a step back and remember that the laws that we pass affect real, living people. We need to be more empathetic, more understanding, and we need to always look out for the little guy. America is a great place to live, but, uh, but if we don't start making changes, then that may not always be the case. Dangerously divided or strongly 